Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Welcome to the show, y'all. Look here. Her boyfriend's dad has told him to find out where Terrace works. They got something up, y'all. This, this young boy, he's 18, but he's just getting out of the juvenile facility. He can't seem to understand that Cheryl is still in love with him, but She's laying down boundaries. She's moving forward in her life. Not without him. Not with him. But this is about her. You see? And see, a lot of times when you, whether you're a man or a woman, when you get yourself together and you're moving forward in your life, you got people that were in your life when you was a mess that might not be around when you get it together. Not because something's wrong with you, because something's going on with them. It doesn't make them a bad person. It's just that when you change the way you see the world and your moral compass starts to get more in line with a person that's being positive, productive, and responsible, right? The people that don't live like that, they might fall away. And then they got to create these reasons for themselves to justify it, right? They'll blame it all on you. You ain't straight no more. You the one that done change. Yeah, sure did. But I'm not changing for the worse. I'm changing for the better. But they'll make it seem like you ain't straight no more. And that makes them angry on the inside, right? And that's got to do with them, not you. And then they try to do things that interfere with your growth, stifle your growth. And you got to be constantly aware of what's going on, right? So that you don't fall prey to whatever it is that they're doing, see? But see, when, when they're being tutored, Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. When they're being tutored by somebody that's seasoned in the game, it's hard to recognize what it is that they got going on. Now, see, her boyfriend's father's the one that's pulling the string. He's the puppeteer, right? He's telling them what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, right? And he's telling them not to say certain things to Cheryl because he don't want Cheryl to figure it out later on, right? Because this is going to get tricky. You understand? The game is going to get tricky. Trust me on this, right? So look here. Check this out. So you got one night where Terrence and, and Teresa, they want to go out, right? Now, Teresa has a car, too, you know, and Terrence has his own car. You understand what I'm saying? Now, they've been watching Terrence, her boyfriend and his father. They've been watching. They know where he works. They know he's respected in the neighborhood. They've been, you know what I'm saying, sniffing around like some old bloodhounds. You know what I'm saying? Trying to find out what's going on with him. And they do. Everybody loves and respects this man. He's taking care of the business. He's a, he's a pillar of the community, as they say. You understand what I'm saying? Solid as a rock. You know? Nothing bad about it. So they got to do something to destroy his good name, his reputation, right? They got to break him down, right? And if they, they believe if they break him down, destroy that reputation, then they can get him out of the house and influence what's going on in that house. Mm. Now listen to me, when you conniving, see you don't think about the reasons and things and the, they might come into play that might make your plan not seem as good as it seems to you, right? But that's how a lot of people in the streets are. When they come up with an idea, it's A1 humdun. And they'll have all of their I's dotted and T's crossed and it just looks good, right? And then when they turn that paper into the teacher, she starts circling with that red marker. This ain't right, that ain't right, this ain't. And they get mad because they get an F on the paper. Follow me now. Am I moving too fast for you? I hope I'm not. You, you know what I'm trying to say? So when they execute this plan, we are methodical. Everything seems to work out fine, right? See, like I said, Terrence and Teresa went out, right? They took Teresa's car. Now, Terrence, he left his car. But see, he left his keys there, too. You know what I'm saying? They had an extra set of keys hanging up in the house, right? In the kitchen. All of them did. They didn't have to worry about all of this old kind of nonsense because they knew who came into the house, right? And if you wanted to use the car, just ask, right? So 
They had an extra set of keys just in case of an emergency, you know, hanging in the house for everybody. So, you know, Cheryl and her boyfriend are spending some time because, you know, her mother and her stepfather are out. But, <laughs> let me show you how dirty people get when they're trying to do something, right? See, her boyfriend slip up Mickey, knocks her out. She's unconscious. She's gone. She's sleeping good. Not aware of any sound or anything or anybody. And guess what happens? See, her boyfriend, he goes into the restroom and gets an old work shirt that belongs to Terrence, right? And see, he's a supervisor at the factory, right? So it's got supervisor on it, got his name on it, right on the shirt. You feel me? Right on the shirt. Now, listen to me. They're not the same height, not the same weight. Now, they got the same similar skin complexion, but it's a slight difference. You feel what I'm saying? But remember that. That's going to matter later on. Remember that. Now, listen to me. So then he goes to get the keys, he gets the car, pulls out, goes down to one of the local stores, right? Robs the job. Oh, yeah, robs the job. Gets in and gets out quick. Now, his daddy happened to be waiting on him at, in the parking lot. And he helped. He was a distraction in the store. You feel what I'm saying? The boy come in real quick, get in and get out. Traumatize the clerk. Tra just traumatize. You feel me? But it's one thing that clerk locked in on, right? Because there wasn't no cameras. There wasn't no cameras in there. One thing that clerk locked in on was this. Mm. Listen to me. Just listen to him. Locked in on that shirt. He saw the name on it. It said Terrence. Supervisor. Right? And because he recognized that name in his mind, he thought he saw, guess who? Guess what? Terrence. See, that's how the, the mind will play tricks on you. You feel what I'm saying? It's the power of suggestion, y'all. You understand? And then you got somebody in the store that gonna corroborate the story. And it happens to be his father. What? 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 So the boy gets up out of there and gets back to the house real quick, parks the car, goes back into the bedroom, wakes her up and tells her, look, it's time for me to go, babe. She wakes up all drowsy, this, this, and that. Hugs him and tells him, okay, then, you know, I got to go to work tomorrow. She thinks she done had a good night and all this and just dozed off. And he's so loving because he laid there and spent time with her, right? She just don't know. So he leaves, right? He's going home. Terrence, Teresa get back to the house. They sitting in the house chilling. Ain't nothing going on, right? All of a sudden... They get a knock at the door. It's the police. They didn't come with sirens blaring and all this and that, you know? Because they were trying to figure out what was going on. They want to ask him some questions and, and figure out what's going on, right? Now, they got the clerk in the car. They done already identified the car as the car that was used in the robbery. Now, they got the clerk in the back seat of a squad car and they bring Terrence out. When they brought Terrence out, the clerk looks and he said, sorta of, kinda looks like him. But I know that's the car, but it sorta of, kinda looks like him. He's not a hundred percent certain because the size is off and the, the height is off, but it gotta be him. It's gotta be him. So they let him out the car and he looks at him and he says, reluctantly, he said, because he's disappointed because he's seen him a hundred times in the store and he don't want to see it, but he puts his head down. He said, it's him. You understand? And Terrence looks at him and says, what? What are you talking about? And he said, you robbed the store tonight. The police officer told him, turn, your hand, turn around and put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest for... Um, 
Terrence is looking at him. He's in shock. And the officer grabs his hands and puts him behind his back, put the handcuffs on him and walks him over to the car. And as he's leaning down and putting him in the car, he looks at Teresa and Cheryl. And if you want to know the rest of this story, you're going to have to tune in to the next episode because it's getting it's getting there, y'all. I'm telling you now. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all. I'm getting so tired.